The world of professional wrestling is known for its colourful cast of characters, which come in all shapes and sizes. Midget wrestling has the longest history in professional wrestling, and the concept of mini-sized versions of famous wrestlers is an integral part of Lucha Libre. Please forgive us if there's any height-related puns, as they're purely unintentional. With that in mind, here are 10 WWE Midgets and where they are now. Number 1. Max Mini Lucha Libre is best known for its rich heritage based on its colourful masks and other elements of its unique heritage. One tradition is its array of mini estrellas, a term referring to its mini wrestlers made up of individuals who can be dwarfs, midgets or short men who are under 5 feet tall. As noted in Heather Levi's The World of Lucha Libre, these wrestlers usually enter the ring as mini versions of full-size stars. Normally, minis fight other minis. One famous mini estrella is Suke, a mini who began working in a bunny suit in Mexico's AAA promotion as Little Bunny before emulating Luchador Mascara Sangrada, taking the name Mascarita Sangrada Jr. Suke as he entered the WWF in 1997, joining other minis from AAA, debuting as Max Mini. He worked a number of matches including pay-per-views such as Ground Zero, Bad Blood and the 1998 Royal Rumble. Max Mini would spend time on WWF Super Astros before returning to AAA. Always in demand, Suke worked for Mexico's CMLL promotion before returning to WWE in 2005, working in its short-lived juniors division. The original Suke was last seen wrestling in 2008 and is believed that a new wrestler took the role over. Number 2. Mini Dust aka Mini Goldust one of the incredible things about Lucha Libre is the lengths wrestlers go in order to protect their true identities, doing so in ways that would make comic book superheroes jealous. One such mini estrella is the man best known as Mini Abismo Negro. After his 1992 debut, this aspiring star worked the independent scene before AAA signed him, bringing him in as the junior version of Caris La Momia. In 1997, he joined several other AAA minis in the WWF, in his case working as Mini Goldust. However, he would find Lucha fame when he was repackaged in AAA as Mini Abismo Negro, winning the Mexican National Mini Estrella Championship. Whether you know him as Mini Goldust or as Mini Abismo Negro, it's easy to understand why he's enjoyed such a long in-ring career. Number 3. Mini Boogeyman and Mini Booker T Given the Boogeyman's uncanny appearance, it's no shock that WWE brought out a mini version of him. However, could anyone do justice to the character Martin Wright played so well? Turns out, wrestler Chris Holyfield was more than capable of playing the Boogeyman's junior partner in Slime, working a program against Finlay and Hornswoggle. Holyfield was no stranger to spoofing other wrestlers, as he played Mini Booker T during 2001's Invasion Angle, where The Rock took on Booker T. In a 2012 interview, he recalled the start of his wrestling career and the ensuing success. It was my first pro card. The year was 1988. Overnight, I went from crappy motels to suites. All of a sudden, fans were everywhere. At the venue, at the hotel, even at the rental car places. One night, a couple of the St. Louis Cardinals came to see me wrestle. After the show, they invited me up to their suite to hang out with the Fat Boys, who were a huge rap group back then. In addition to wrestling, Holyfield has appeared in films such as Five Days in the A and Festival, as well as the TV series Zombie Cleanup. He also works as a motivational speaker, encouraging school children to stop bullying. Number 4. The Haiti Kid Although his career dates back to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, Raymond Kessler is best remembered by fans from the rock and wrestling era of the mid-1980s. The Haiti Kid proudly took sides with television star Mr. T during the build-up to Mr. T's boxing match against Rowdy Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 2. Unfortunately for the Haiti Kid, Piper and henchman Cowboy Bob Orton targeted the Haiti Kid, abducting him after a match, giving him a mohawk haircut to match Mr. T's hairstyle. The Haiti Kid would stand in Mr. T's corner at WrestleMania 2 and also participate in the infamous mixed match at WrestleMania 3. Kessler would retire from professional wrestling sometime in the 1990s, but he would sadly pass away in May of 2001. Number 5. Little Beaver Long considered one of the greatest minis of all time, Lionel Giroux began wrestling in his homeland of Canada, achieving fame and success as Little Beaver, playing upon his indigenous roots. 
He became a huge draw during his seemingly eternal feud with fellow mini Sky Lolo. Reportedly, the duo proved so popular at the box office that they could command upwards of 15% of the gate. Although Little Beaver's legacy was cemented by the early 1980s, he's arguably best remembered for his match at WrestleMania 3, where he teamed with Hillbilly Jim and the Haiti Kid against King Kong Bundy, Little Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. The match became infamous after King Kong Bundy broke the rules, attacking his much smaller opponent, and not only body slammed Beaver, but dropped an elbow smash on him, legitimately injuring Giroux and forcing his retirement from in ring competition. He would appear in Hillbilly Jim's corner the following year during Jim's match against One Man Gang, eating a 747 pound splash after repeatedly interfering in the match. Giroux sadly passed away on the 4th of December 1995 at the age of 60. Number 6. Sky Lolo No discussion of minis would be complete without mentioning Marcel Gauthier, who rose to fame as Sky Lolo. This iconic Canadian grappler, who along with Little Beaver, was synonymous with midget wrestling, enjoying worldwide fame. Don't believe us? Consider the fact that he and Little Beaver wrestle command performances in front of the UK's Queen Elizabeth and Egypt's King Farouk. He wrestled until the 1980s and passed away on the 6th November 1998 at the age of 70 from a heart attack. In one of wrestling's most bizarre moments, his ranking in author and historian Greg Oliver's book, The Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame The Canadians, led to an outrageous beat by Sky Lolo's fellow Canadian Brett the Hitman Hart. During a 2008 speech where he was inducting his father Stu into the Wrestling Museum and Hall of Fame, Hart verbally attacked Greg Oliver. These guys over here, it makes me laugh that Greg Oliver here rated me behind Sky Lolo, as I think the 13th greatest Canadian wrestler. Sky Lolo was a much better wrestler than me, but he was only half the man I was. But anyway, well my point is, you know, I take a lot of pride in what I do. It means a lot to me that people would come here and be a part of this, because wrestling was important to me, and I hope it was important for you. But it's important that the people tell the truth. Hart would demand Oliver leave the event, or he'd leave, showing how short-tempered the hitman could really be. Number 7. El Torito a man with a lengthy career in Lucha Libre, Mascarita Dorada worked in AAA as Mascarita Sagrada, then in CMLL as Mascarita Dorada. After leaving CMLL, Dorada worked in the indie scene and returned to AAA before being signed to the WWE in 2013. Now working as El Torito, the mask mascot to the tag team Los Matadors, El Torito worked at ringside but also wrestled, including a program against Hornswoggle. His battles with Hornswoggle included a mask versus hair match, which El Torito won, and like most minis, El Torito was used for comedic purposes, including one angle where Samurai wore a red dress, only for El Torito to chase her, incensed by the colour red. El Torito was released from the WWE in 2016, but stays active on the independent scene, under his name Mascarita Dorada. He also appeared in the 2006 film Nacho Libre. Number 8. Mini Undertaker during JBL's feud against The Undertaker, he decided to make light of the dead man by bringing in a lightweight version of the Phenom. Veteran grappler Dan DeLuccio impersonated The Undertaker, getting chokeslammed for his efforts. His career included work in the WWE, including its short-lived Juniors division, TNA, and Hulk Hogan's Micro Championship Wrestling. Like many wrestlers, DeLuccio announced his retirement, embarking on a farewell tour only to return to the ring. In 2015, he announced he was returning to the ring as part of his new promotion, Midget Wrestling Warriors. Number 9. Dink One of the WWF's best-known minis, Quebec native Claude Giroux trained under legendary grappler Little Beaver, working as the mini version of wrestler Tiger Jackson. Giroux entered the WWF in the early 90s, allying with the Bushwhackers during their program against the Beverly Brothers. Ever versatile, Giroux played the macho midget during Randy Savage's match against Doink the Clown. He eventually teamed with Doink as Dink, Doink's pint-sized helper, debuting during a November 1993 episode of Superstars of Wrestling when Santa Claus gifted Doink. Dink was Doink's sidekick from there, including a 1994 Survivor Series match alongside Doink and Minnie's Pink and Wink as Clowns R Us in a losing battle against Jerry the King Lawler and the Royal Family, a team of Minnie's made up of Cheesy, Queasy and Sleazy. The match would earn Worst Work Match of the Year from the Wrestling Observer that year. 
Dink would leave the WWF in 1995, but continued wrestling on the independent circuit and at least once for WCW. As of 2018, Giroud was still wrestling, and at the age of 62, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. And number 10, Hornswoggle. After working on the indie scene, Dylan Postel enjoyed a lengthy run in the WWE, first as Finley's devilish sidekick little bastard, before morphing into the more family-friendly Hornswoggle. Hornswoggle proved to be a talented performer with fantastic comedic timing and facial expressions. Whether he was portraying Mr. McMahon's long-lost son, or working a singles feud against Chavo Guerrero, the master of the tadpole splash always knew how to put a smile on the faces of WWE fans. In 2014, he appeared in two films, Muppets Most Wanted and Leprechaun Origins. Hornswoggle worked from 2006 to 2016 in the WWE, winning the Cruiserweight Championship, or more importantly, the fans' hearts. He returned to the indie circuit and worked in Impact Wrestling for roughly a year. He was recently seen at the Greatest Royal Rumble in April of 2018, and currently he's said to be working on a book with the working title, Life is Short and So Am I slated for a 2019 release. Well guys there you have it, 10 WWE midgets and where they are now. Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.